Hey there, this is Working Actor School. My name is Patrick Laberto, and what follows is a lecture from one of my adult advanced classes. Enjoy. Today we're going to be talking, before we get into your read, uh, about the difference between uh, television acting and film acting, which I say in the past because in the 60s, 70s, 80s, through the 90s, and up, you know, the whole history of Hollywood, up through the 90s, um, TV and movies were different. Uh, there was a more, you know, stars were on the movies and uh, your TV actors were on TV. You'd have a guy like Michael Landon, who was a big, huge TV star. He'd do a movie and no one would care, you know, because he's in he's in your house every day. And that's changed now, now that we have the streaming platforms and HBO and all cable through the 90s and through the aughts. You know, you've got a lot of these actors doing these different types of jobs where you've got basically a movie cast on television. Now, it may feel like there's no difference between movies and TV because the actors are moving you know, back and forth, but there absolutely is. And what, what's the difference? There's a long form component to television storytelling where, you know, with JAG, we did 222 hours of television, a 222 hour movie. But it wasn't a movie. It was 222 hours of TV where each hour tells a different story. A movie tells one story over its period of time, which, you know, two to three hours now. For us actors, what we need to understand is when you're in a film, your face and your performance is on the big screen, obviously. It's even, even now when we have all of our big screen TVs, it's still bigger at the movie theaters. So there are still a few differences when you're acting for film and when you're acting for television. Film, because of the bigger screen, is going to be infinitely more subtle than uh, the smaller screen. I heard a quote today, which I thought was fantastic. The actor Ben Kingsley, who won the Academy Award for Gandhi, and he's been in a bunch of great films, he says, every time a director asks me for another take, I try to do less. That he'll give a performance, but each time he's doing he's doing less because the big screen pulls that information out of you. Another great story I just heard today was Al Pacino was being directed by this great big director. And the director says, I'd like you to do this particular thing and Al Pacino says I've already done it I did it in two takes ago you didn't see it but you'll see it in dailies and sure enough when they ran the dailies on the on the screening room he saw it in dailies where he didn't even see it in person like you know five feet from the actor there's something about the movie camera and the movie screen that interacts with your performance and it makes it bigger it amplifies it it defines it more uh the way that they decide to shoot your close-up or how your close-up is composed all has a, a, an impact on how you are being perceived also one great thing about a movie theater is it's dark and for the most part, you're not supposed to be talking to your friends and other people aren't supposed to be talking or on their phone. And so all the attention is, is geared towards putting it towards the screen and watching the performance. On television, you can pause it anytime you want, go get a Coke, go to the restroom, talk to your kids, whatever. It's a completely different ex experience. When you're dealing with a film and a movie, it's going to be much more subtle because it's going to be seen far more than on television. The next idea is because when you're dealing with television, you're dealing with, 
for the most part, TV shows, even if they're more than one episode, a limited series or three of episodes or six or 10 episodes, you're telling a story in longer bits. Your breakdown of your character is going to be spread out over a longer period of time. So you're going to have more time to tell the story of your character than you would in a movie. In a movie, you've got two and a half, three hours to tell the whole story. And in a TV show, you might have an entire episode dedicated to one event in your character's backstory that they want to show exactly how you became the, you know, the bad guy. Or maybe you're they're telling the story of Tony's life and they do a flashback to, you know, uh your you know, your 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 old man making all the buildings and, and building all this stuff. And so you get this whole big story that you wouldn't get in a movie theater. So the storytelling process is different. And when the storytelling process is different, your storytelling pro, uh, pro, uh, process becomes different too as an actor because you are in service of the project. So you're doling out bits of information when you're on a television show that in a movie might be one or two scenes. But in an episodic television show, might be three scene, it might be three episodes. When my character on the TV show lost his leg, they planned it out for a whole season. You know, it's like he lost his leg in the beginning of the season. Then he's got to have recovery. Then he's got to have you know uh, arguments. And will he be a lawyer anymore? Or can he go back to JAG? And all of these were parts of a bigger story that took over twelve to fifteen episodes to tell. Whereas in a movie. You know, like um, uh, Forrest Gump, you might see Lieutenant Dan lose his leg and you might see him have a couple of scenes, but it's nowhere near the amount of time that was spent for my character. So you're going to have a bigger and longer and bigger canvas and a longer time to tell the story. Um, the idea that when you are on television you still have to have an energy that would come across as overwhelming on screen. Um, and it's just the way it is. It's how, because again, one of the things is the, the budgets for television shows still are lower than for film. And so where do you get the bang for the buck? You get it in the energy of the actors or you put them in situations that are more energized or energetic because you're not going to have 300 million dollars to make top gun 2 you're going to have you know a million dollars to make an episode of jag where they put the guy in a fake cockpit and then you know spray mist past him to make it look like he's going 600 miles an hour whereas you know tom cruise gets in a jet and puts a camera in the in the in the jet and does it that way it's like it's a completely different you know experience so uh this lesson is pretty quick the idea here is when you're on screen for a film, it's going to be more subtle. It's going to be more nuanced because you've got the space, you've got the screen. You know, the whole big thing with Oppenheimer right now on all these IMAX screens is about his face is six stories tall. So if you've got a six story tall face there and he's making all of these weird, you know, face movements it's really going to be distracting. So you've got to have a very placid face that shows all the emotion coming out of it, but without all of the telus, uh, uh, without all of it projecting. Like, yeah, as an actor, you don't want to, um, you don't want to overact so that your face is doing way more work than it needs to. Meanwhile, on TV, even I keep pointing into my 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 main room there with the television, even even with the big screen TVs, it's minuscule compared to the theater, even in the smallest screen. So you're going to have a bigger performance there. And then on a thing like we're working on, like here, you will see a different level of energy when you get into television, just as you do at film. But like with the, for television here, like a drama on uh, on on, t on TV now is pretty subtle. I, I really do think that they give good subtle performances. Um, but then the thing that we're doing here today is a sitcom where it's more like a live show. It's more broad. It's bigger energy. It's like, what? Are, it's like a film or a, a, a dramatic television show. If you're saying, what are you talking about? It may be 
it may be as little as this. What are you talking about? A sitcom on television might be, what are you talking about? And you can see the difference when it's back to back. But in the context of the sitcom, that seems more realistic than all of a sudden just a guy, you know, barely whispering his lines. Whereas a drama, you got to do that. And then even on a big screen, it's even going to be a lot, a lot less because he's going to be even closer. What are you talking about? You know, it's like, it's just, it, it's levels. So that's, that's to this week's lecture lesson. Hey, if you like what you heard here and want to learn more, you can catch us at workingactorschool.com. We have a whole list of courses. We're always adding classes. You can sign up and have live over the internet acting classes right here from the comfort of your own computer. You don't have to live in Hollywood to train in Hollywood. Mm -hmm.